So I've been painting in a really small apartment now for about five years, so I feel like I'm kind of an expert on painting in small places. And let's be honest, it is not a good time. It's not ideal, it's frustrating, it's noisy, it's crowded, it's embarrassing, but I have learned a few things that, you know, sort of made it more doable, more sustainable, and more comfortable. So I want to talk about, you know, what we can do if we are in these small spaces, because let's face it, rent prices are not going down. <laughs> Inflation is not going down. So we might be in these small places for a while. So we have to learn how to navigate them. And we can't let anything prevent us from creating. We have to, you know, work on our goals, follow our dreams, and stay at it. I've been through about eight iterations of this little dining room studio that I have here, and I finally feel like it's at a pretty good layout. It's definitely still not the goal. I would love to have like a big open air, light filled studio one day. But for now, I want to paint and I live in a small place, so what to do? Let's figure it out. Something that's really helped me is to figure out the best time of day and days of the week that are going to be the quietest. So if you have kids, maybe they're at school. If you have roommates, maybe they're at work or school. If you have a partner, maybe they're working or with friends. You know, what is the time of day where you can get the quietest time? Because for me, the small space is really exasperated by the distractions. It's not so much about the actual space, like the square foot. It's about the lack of privacy often. Often. It's about people walking by and seeing what I'm doing, half-finished paintings. I hate that. There's nothing more I hate than people seeing like half-finished paintings and it's interruption. You know, I don't get into the flow state because people are walking by. So maybe that's early in the morning or late at night or in the afternoon. Whatever it is, just find the prime time for you. I think also changing the way you think about your living space. Do you need a big dining room table? Do you need a sectional couch? Think about where you can reduce the size of things in your house and then instead put a art desk or an, an easel or something in that area where you used to have more furniture. So for me, this meant I thought about the layout of our house and I said, well, we have a bigger living room. Let's put the dining room table in the living room and then I'll use the dining room area for my art studio because it's by the window, it's by the kitchen with the sink hand washing. It's just kind of reimagining what a living space can be. Does your porch need to be a porch or could it be an art studio? So think about, you know, how you can be creative. We also want to think about collapsible, portable, and small. So what this means is if you can't set up shop in a permanent location in your house, then think about packing all your items in a way where you can easily grab them, put them away quickly. I'm thinking like a foldable table, foldable chair, a plain air like Pouchade box, I think they're called, using canvas paper instead of like large canvas panels, you know, using smaller paint tubes and just replacing them more often. Also those like large clipboards or magnetic boards, you can like put your paintings on there and then just transfer that around your house. Those are really nice. Also drop cloths. I love Love using drop cloths. I used to have a desk that I used for painting and working at. So during the day I would do my day job at the desk and then at night I would put a drop cloth and it would become my, you know, art table and it would catch all the messes. Trying to have a minimalist mindset is also really helpful. So when you think about higher quality but fewer items, this can be helpful. Obviously as artists, it's fun to try all the latest and greatest new products or you know to see shelves full of art supplies. That's so exciting and fun, but we don't always have that luxury. So think about having like a few high quality brushes, a few high quality paints that can mix many colors, and then just some you know, canvas paper and some water or whatever. Like you can keep it super simple. So think about being a minimalist and you know, just the bare essentials, the basics, but high quality. I think also limited materials can be great for creativity because for me, I can get overwhelmed with all the options if I have too many supplies and then I just don't wanna create. So if you only have like five colors and you know, five brushes, then it's impossible to like get overwhelmed with the decisions, you know? Another tip that I have utilized for a while is to build up and take up wall space. I really like the idea of having like an easel on your wall. So you just kind of put some nails and that can be like an easel. You can just hang your painting there, stand up while you paint and also hanging up paintings to dry. Pegboards are amazing. I'm obsessed with my pegboard. You can do floating wall shelves. 
tall bookshelves for storage. You can hang baskets from the ceiling. So think about building up and tall and just utilizing the wall and ceiling space if possible. Also, if you have any like tall kitchen cabinets with cobwebs up there that no one's using, utilize those for paint storage or materials. And because we're in a small area, we're going to feel the clutter really strongly. So make sure you take five minutes per day and just tidy up really quickly. Just set a timer, put a podcast on five minutes a day or every other day, and make sure you keep your space really tidy because when it is messy, you're not going to want to work there. And it's so small, you don't have room to like put the mess aside. So I know for me, it prevents me from painting sometimes when I just start piling stuff over here. So it's really important for me to just take those five minutes and clear everything out. And then it's much more inviting and I want to paint. Consider a room divider or a curtain or a bookshelf or something like a makeshift wall to create some privacy. Even an easel could be like a sort of wall away from everybody else. So if you have to be in an area with high traffic, then try to create some bookshelves, easels, just put things around you to kind of create like a little safe space <laughs> of sorts. There's always the classic trick of, I got my headphones on, I do not want to talk to you, I do not hear you. If you're talking to me, I'm going to ignore you. So invest in some good headphones that kind of cancel the noise and also tells everyone else that you are in work mode. Another option, if you're really short on space and you like to go outside, there's always plain air painting. Now I have to be honest, I love the idea of plain air painting, but it's not really my cup of tea. I really like to kind of <laughs> have my comforts, like have a snack, have a drink, you know, take little breaks, go pee easily. <laughs> like being outside with all your materials, it's not that comfortable, you know, and there's no hand washing station. You may get your car dirty. That being said, people absolutely love plain air painting and it is such a beautiful hobby and thing to do. So if you're someone who loves it, then absolutely go for it. It's a great way to obviously have more space. So I really recommend it if you are that type of person. For me, it's not my cup of tea right now, but maybe I'll try it again in the future. And yeah, I do like painting on my porch though, because I kind of have a mix of both. So painting on your porch or garage or in your backyard or something, that's like a great happy medium, I think. And lastly, consider water-based paints. If you're not attached to any type of paint yet and you're a beginner, then I would recommend trying watercolor, gouache, or acrylic. I personally love oil paints and I'm kind of attached to them at this point, so I do use them mostly, but I also like water-based paints. And you can do oil paints in small spaces, absolutely. It's just easier with water-based paints. There's less chemicals, it's less cleanup. Yeah, so if you're new to painting and you aren't sure where to start, I would try water-based paints. They're so easy to clean up and really great for a small space and you don't need a lot of ventilation as much and obviously no messy like mediums or chemicals either. All right, well, those were my tips and I really wanna hear yours, so let me know your tips. We need to support each other in painting in small spaces and we can't let anything get us down. You know, we have to follow our dreams and make things happen. And if we really plan our environment well, there's really no reason that we can't paint. We can always do it, we can always make it happen. So I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you I'm soon. Gonna shine my light.